Hi, I'm Jason Miles with KHOU 11 News. Welcome to Preservation Houston's 2020 Good Brick Tour. We're happy to bring you the tour in a new format and are grateful to our video sponsor, Walter Baring with Martha Turner Sotheby's International Realty for helping make this program possible. Preservation Houston has presented the Good Brick Awards since 1979 to recognize outstanding historic preservation projects and the people who make them happen. The Good Brick Tour has taken place since 2014, giving visitors an inside look at these award-winning historic homes and buildings and demonstrating the value of historic preservation in Houston. Today, we're exploring the beautifully restored Meyer Hall House, a landmark property in a very special neighborhood. Let's take a look. Although it's now just minutes from downtown, the Meyer Hall House was on the outskirts of Houston when it was completed in 1910, where homeowners could escape the growing city's noise, dust, and traffic. The house is located in Cortland Place, a 15-acre subdivision that is now a City of Houston historic district. When development began in 1906, the neighborhood's plan was based on the private places of St. Louis, model communities of high-quality homes with landscaped medians and strong design covenants. The Meyer Hall House was one of the first to be completed in Cortland Place. Prominent Texas architects Sanguinette and Stats designed this finely detailed home for Sterling Meyer and his wife Alice. Meyer was a successful attorney and one of the founding investors in the Cortland Place Improvement Company, which developed the neighborhood. The Meyer Hall House is a recorded Texas historic landmark and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The name recognizes the Myers who built the house and engineer and contractor James Donald Hall and his wife Virginia who owned the home from 1919 into the 1960s. The house is an outstanding example of the Tudor revival style inspired by English architecture from the reigns of Henry VIII and Elizabeth I. Tudor revival is one of the picturesque styles that became popular in the United States around the turn of the 20th century. The peaked gables and half-timbered detailing give the home an almost fairy tale appearance. The Tudor influence is visible in the diamond-paned windows, steep roof line, and massive chimneys. The large windows and broad veranda are a concession to the local climate since actual Tudor houses don't have porches. In the days before air conditioning, buildings were designed to make the most of natural ventilation. The placement of windows and even the home's position on the lot could be determined by the prevailing breeze, which comes from the southeast in Houston. Each of the four bedrooms on the second floor had access to a porch or balcony, while the front porch served as an outdoor living area. The current owners purchased the house in 2006 and began an extensive renovation that was completed in 2009. Although the home's appearance had not changed since 1910, deferred maintenance and age had taken their toll. The front porch is an exact replica of the original, which had to be removed due to a failing foundation. Before the historic bricks were reinstalled, the mortar was analyzed and recreated using Galveston sand to match the original. Historic windows throughout the house have been restored, along with the century-old hardware on the doors and windows. The home's interior reflects the influence of the arts and crafts movement, which emphasized straightforward design and quality craftsmanship. In the United States, it is often called the craftsman style. The woodwork is all original, from the beamed ceilings and paneling to the oak floors and built-in cabinets. The dark stain is in keeping with the Tudor revival style. The wood is tiger oak, which is produced with a specific milling process that reveals a distinctive grain resembling the striped pattern of a tiger's fur. The living room occupies the entire front section of the house, providing ample space for entertaining guests or quiet evenings with the family, as well as room for fresh air to circulate. The fireplace is the focal point of the living room, as it is in most arts and crafts homes. The hearth was meant to be the center of family life, offering a comfortable place for reading and conversation. Original leaded glass windows brighten the room, especially in the afternoon when sunlight pours through the windows and is broken up by the geometric pattern of the glass. The doors on the built-in cabinets on either side of the fireplace contain leaded glass in the same pattern as the windows. 
The furnishings include new pieces in the craftsman style that complement the historic architecture and are appropriate for the period. The cabinets and bench on the opposite end of the room are also original. The built-ins provide additional storage and a comfortable place to curl up with a book or listen to music. Open floor plans are characteristic of arts and crafts houses, and the living room in this home flows directly into the dining room, a bright space with broad windows. The first homeowners had live-in servants, so all of the family's meals would have been served in this room. The dining room furnishings are new pieces that were built from classic designs by the Stickley Company, which has produced quality craftsman-style furniture for well over 100 years. The craftsman designs were a departure from traditional Victorian dining room furniture. The simpler style was meant to give mealtimes a more informal feel that encouraged conversation. The prominent fireplace includes such arts and crafts elements as the brackets under the mantel and original tile on the surround. The panel above the fireplace also shows the distinctive pattern that gives Tiger Oak its name. When the Meyer Hall house was built, kitchens were the realm of servants. Today, they're part of the family space in the home. So the restoration combined what were originally a series of smaller rooms at the back of the house to create a larger, modern kitchen. The custom island incorporates elements that reflect the arts and crafts influences in the rest of the house. Although the ceiling appears to be pressed tin, the effect was created with textured tile and oxidized copper paint. What was once an exterior wall leading to a service porch was opened up, and the porch was enclosed to create a casual, sunny dining area for the family. The beadboard ceiling is evidence of the room's original use, as is the brick wall that used to be part of the home's exterior. Another private space was added on the east side of the house in 1917. The sunroom's large windows capture the soft morning light and allow the prevailing southeastern breezes to cool the room. When the home was restored, the sunroom had to be rebuilt due to foundation problems, but the space was recreated using the historic architectural drawings. Custom mahogany windows make it a warm, cozy living area in the winter and a bright, airy spot to relax in warm weather. A pocket door slides back to reveal another of the private spaces, a small sitting room that has been repurposed as an office. The new paneling, shelves, and floors are finished to match the historic woodwork in the rest of the home. The office is just off the stair hall, one of the home's key features. The staircase has a simple but impressive design. The massive banister and dark paneling reflect the influence of both the arts and crafts movement and the Tudor revival style. The staircase provides access to the family quarters on the second floor and also enhances the home's natural ventilation. The stairwell draws warm air up from the first floor and out through the windows on the landing. The original leaded glass windows are not only an interesting decorative element, they're part of a conscious plan that allowed for relatively comfortable living in the days before air conditioning. Preservation Houston recognized the restoration of the Meyer Hall house with a Good Brick Award in 2010, a century after the home was built. The award acknowledges the effort that went into preserving the building's historic character and original fabric while making it a functioning home for a modern family. I hope you enjoyed your tour of the Meyer Hall house. To view other tour videos, just visit preservationhouston.org slash goodbricktour. If you donate $25 or more to the Good Brick Tour, you'll receive access to a special bonus video exploring the Esperson buildings downtown, including a trip to the top of the iconic Niels Esperson building. You can donate on the website or by texting Good Brick to 44321. Your contributions support Preservation Houston's public service, community outreach, and education programs. Thanks again to our sponsor, Walter Baring with Martha Turner Sotheby's International Realty, and thank you for being with us. I'm Jason Miles.